and open for Newsnight, the BBC's daily current affairs programme. Newsnight's been on the air now for 10 years. It has a loyal group of viewers in both Britain and the Netherlands. So what's the magic formula? Good evening, this is dus Lopen Foer. Het enige programma dat onderdak biedt aan kwaliteit en commercie. Want vanavond presenteren we niet alleen alle sterren en het klatergoud van RTL Veronique, maar ook Newsnight, het juweel onder de actualiteitenrubrieken. En wij doen vanavond ook in superlatieven, want wij besteden aandacht aan de brug. De nieuwste en duurste televisieserie journalistiek. Wij gingen naar Londen om het succes, om het geheim van het succes van Newsnight te achterhalen. Het van Newsnight, nu op BBC 2. Nu al tien jaar lang begint elke dag van de werkweek om half twaalf Nederlandse tijd Newsnight. In een gelukkige combinatie van snelheid en gedegen analyse worden de belangrijkste gebeurtenissen van de dag live vanuit Londen gepresenteerd. Good evening, Mr. Gorbachev and his plans for multi-party politics come under heavy fire. I think it's respected throughout. British journalism and British political and economic fields as, as the premier program. Rhodesia becomes independent Zimbabwe in 15 minutes time. Newsnight is here in Salisbury to cover it live. But it's worth doing because it's, uh, it's a quality Rolls Royce type program. When it came to quarrels in faraway places between peoples of which we knew, well, not very much, it was the Falklands operation which had really established Newsnight as vital viewing. I think it's because they take time analyzing stories before they put them on air, so that when they commit themselves to actually filming a story and actually pursuing a story, they're very sure that there is a story there in the first place. Newsnight deed voor het eerst wat nu als heel normaal wordt ervaren. Satellietverbindingen en analyse van verslaggevers ter plaatse. De Leninwerf, Solidariteit en Leg Walenza kregen mede daardoor hun bekendheid en gezicht. And finally tonight, the most symbolic and irreversible change of all is underway. Bulldozers breaking holes in the Berlin Wall to provide increased access in and out of what four days ago was still the most sinister fortified border in the world. We just had to go to Berlin. I mean, it was the day the wall opened. If you remember, it was one evening, round about 10 o'clock, when it all suddenly started to happen. And after the program that night, we wished we were there, the night it actually opened the wall. But after the program had finished, we all sat round in the editor's office up there, had a quick glass of wine and said, right, we'll go to Berlin tomorrow. I'm joined here in the studio in East Berlin by Thomas Kieliger, who's uh, come all the way from West Germany to join us tonight in East Berlin here. Because our formula is very much a discussion formula. We like to get people live on the program discussing the issues of the day. And to be in Berlin with real people discussing what had just happened was essential. I think... Mm, not many will be ready to, to open for, for an elbow society, for a comp competitive society where life is hard and... When we were sitting there in the studio in East Berlin, I saw the, the reporter I was with in Berlin holding this great brick behind the camera over there. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I've got this. It was Alenka Frenkel, one of our reporters. Alenka, what, 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 what have you here? A small token of my esteem. Mm -hmm. Here is a brick. From the Berlin Wall, a souvenir from your trip here. She put it on the table, li live, on air, and she put it on the table and she said, here's a brick from the Berlin Wall, they've just this minute knocked it out of the Berlin Wall. And I had with me Jens Reich, who's an East German member of New Forum. Jens Reich, look at it and tell us what you think tonight. Marvelous. I think uh, it's marvelous. I would never have dreamed of seeing a, a piece of brick from the wall. Not from the Chinese wall, but from our wall, our Berlin Wall. It's fine. Tien uur ochtends, redactievergadering. Oké, okay, uh, any other thoughts about what we could be doing today? If, if we were going to concentrate on that sort of inner power struggle still, I think the question I'd actually really like to know the answer to is, how would it actually happen if Gorbachev was to lose this battle that they're all supposed to be having in the Kremlin? Who would support him? But what makes um, a good journalist on this kind of programme? Um, they have to be a sort of cross between a news animal and a current affairs animal, so to speak. I mean, they need to have the ability to 
crunch a piece out on the day. I mean, to realise where the bottom line is and operate very quickly, write quickly, find the interviewees and edit quickly. By the same token, we don't want people who are, who are just rigidly adhere to a newsroom ethos where, while they're very good and very quick, imagination is often bashed out of the system because you're into a lot of routine news gathering. Here, you need a bit more imagination, a bit more flair to bring a different aspect to a news story. The behandling of the news is inventive. When vorige week het plenum van de communistische partij van de Sovjet-Unie achter gesloten deuren vergaderde en er dus geen beelden beschikbaar waren van die hoogst belangrijke gebeurtenis, achterhaalde Newsnight wat er was gezegd. There is no assessment of mistakes made during the period of perestroika. En besloot die teksten door acteurs te laten uitspreken. Sommige mensen ging dit nu weer te ver. Ze vinden dat de geloofwaardigheid van Newsnight door een dergelijk toneelstukje wordt aangetast. Piling up within the social system for decades and burst into the open. The Soviet Communist Party, it goes without saying. Well, like any journalist, as I'm sure you know, there's a sort of instinctive um, moment when you have to say to yourself, this is the story to go for, this is the story not to bother with. It's simply that. You know roughly what kind of people are watching Newsnight. They're a, a, an audience who have a particular interest in spending more time watching the news, and watching current affairs, watching uh, documentary and topical affairs than any other program. So that you make, you, 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 you go for something that will interest them. There are three broad scenarios for what the experts call the security architecture of Europe in 1995. In the East, today's Warsaw Pact would have lost its meaning for most of its present members. Poland, Czechoslovakia and Hungary will have joined Romania and Bulgaria in being free of Soviet troops. As for East Germany, as in all three of our scenarios, it will have united with West Germany. Now, if it turns blue, and becomes part of a united Germany in NATO, the West would probably attempt to reassure the Russians by keeping NATO troops off East German territory. But we cannot rule out the chance of Germany paying the price of unity by going neutral. Secret of News Night. I think it's in this magical combination of a news and current affairs mix. And it's a daily program trying to also stand back at the same time. So it can range from being very fast reactive, a news program with very sharp reflexes to pursuing the, the, the story as fast as everybody else, to on the other hand being able to stand back and assess and put it in context. Newsnight heeft een staf van 80 mensen, twee keer zoveel als NOS Laat om maar een voorbeeld te noemen. Het budget is vier keer zo hoog. Toch blijft het kijkerspubliek beperkt. 1 miljoen Britten per uitzending. Wat dat betreft doet de NOS Laat het naar verhouding niet slechter dan het zo bevoorrechte Newsnight. I think that the continuity that the programme has managed to keep in, in, in building up a very good stable of reporters and presenters is, uh, is if anything, the secret of Newsnight. Backed up, of course, by, you know, whole teams of producers and graphics artists and editors who, while good, are more transient. They move, they move towards the programme and move off again. It's the, it's, the, it's the stable of reporters and presenters, which, which really, uh, I think, the programme secret, the secret weapon. For now, from Steve and me and from all of us on Newsnight, a very good night. Now from David and me and all our team in the Bahamas, a very good night. A very good night to you. A very good night to you. Good night. En dan hebben we nu Mr. Snow, Peter Snow, nog even aan onze tafel via de satelliet. Welcome to our program, Mr. Snow. Hi. I, I wonder if you were ever bothered by your BBC managers about the ratings of Newsnight. You have one million viewers, that's quite considerable, but still it's a small percentage. It is. I mean, it's about a million or so. It goes up and down, depending on the news. Sometimes, during the Falklands War, for example, we had two, three million a night. I think the answer is, I mean, the great thing about the BBC is that it isn't that audience sensitive. Isn't that, sorry, that viewer, viewer size sensitive. Uh, it is prepared, and in fact, that's part of the purpose of the BBC, to produce programs that speak to a small proportion of the audience, provided they're important enough programs. So I don't think that's a major problem. Anyway, a million people is a lot of people. <laughs> Do you fear commercial television? Oh, well, we have commercial television here already. Uh, the answer is no, because we have it here, we have intense competition for commercial television, which incidentally takes the business of news and current affairs 
as seriously, to be fair, as the BBC does. There's a great number of extremely good and minority audience programs on ITV. There is, of course, the competition from satellite broadcasting coming in. I think I would say no. I don't fear that it will reduce the quality of programs like Newsnight. Clearly, there will, I suspect, certainly on those commercial channels with the competition there, be fewer serious quality programs perhaps in that area. But I think, as far as Newsnight's concerned, that we will go on. What do we have tonight in Newsnight? Well, we have quite an exciting night tonight because we have the first interview with Yegor Ligachev, the so-called conservative in the Soviet Politburo, who tells us a number of very interesting things, uh, including... Uh, sorry? Live from USSR? Uh, no, it's not live. No, no, we recorded it a couple of days ago. But uh, he's extremely, extremely interesting. He says he accepts all the things that Gorbachev has gone for, but that he would not ever stay in the Communist Party if it were prepared to sanction the use of hired workers in competitive free enterprise. So he's laying down the line very clearly on the economy. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Je wordt hier jaloers als u dit zo ziet. De Rolls Royce uh, van het TTV nieuws. Uh, niet jaloers, want ik kijk als ik wil naar de BBC, naar Nieuwsnight. Maar, maar we zouden natuurlijk ook uh, in Vlaanderen voor de BRT willen hebben. Of ja. BTM. Maar ja, hebben, ja. heeft men in Vlaanderen geen geld voor een Rolls Royce of is het gebrek aan politieke wil? Absoluut geen geld en de politieke wil zal ook wel ontbreken. Ja. Geen mensen, geen geld, uh, geen zin. Het enige wat men bij ons tracht te doen is meer en meer duiding in het journaal te brengen. Maar veel verder dan de gebruikelijke clichés kom je niet. En dat is juist het mooie en het rustgevende eigenlijk van de Newsnight elke avond om half twaalf. Dat je te weten komt wat er achter die clichés zit. Zo of zou het eigenlijk is. bij ons ook moeten gebeuren. Dus dat is het ideaal. Ja. Afgelopen maandag begon bij de KRO de achtdelige serie De Brug. Geïnspireerd op het werk van de Rooms-Katholieke streekromanschrijver Anton Kolen. Het scenario voor het Hollands drama werd geschreven door Thomas Ros. Um, we laten een stukje zien zo meteen, meneer Ros, maar ja. um, mijn vraag is in de eerste plaats, uh, um, u heeft naar die aflevering, ik ben eventjes uh, met... Nou, uh... de NCV die wilde afhankelijk de serie ja, hebben. Nee, de, niet de serie, de NCV uh, was geïnteresseerd in een project uh, wat ze samen met de BRT zouden kunnen financieren. 